Hello, my friend, Stevie B here. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, just getting my day started here, and I'm excited about today's video. This is one I've been meaning to do for quite some time. I have touched on the topic of productivity in previous videos, but I'm going to do a deeper dive today. I'm going to share my strategies with you here and take you through uh, my five rules uh, that I adhere to pretty much every day uh, in order to get things done and be super productive. And make sure to stick around to the very end because I want to share uh, some bonus tips with you to identify and tackle uh, some of those pain points that I think a lot of music producers uh, struggle with, myself included. So every month I finish a handful of tracks. Today we are almost nearing the end of October and I've completed uh, one Halloween hip hop track for Motion Array, uh, two lo-fi hip hop tracks for a sync library submission, uh, a high energy 90s inspired uh, hip hop track for Artlist, uh, two folky ukulele based songs also for Artlist, uh, a synthwave track, which I shared in my last video on YouTube, uh, and three trailer remixes for a production company here in Vancouver. As usual, it's been a busy month. I've managed to get this all done uh, while running two online businesses, uh, doing feedback videos for members of the Production Music Academy, doing one-on-one -on -one Zoom consultations with members as well, and not to mention, you know, filming and editing these YouTube videos, which is a fair amount of work as well. Every day is a long work day, and, uh, you know, to be fully transparent, I occasionally I do get burnt out. Uh, but I'm not complaining. I love what I do, and uh, that's just life. Every day I get a little better at it. Now, this video is not going to be about productivity hacks in a general sense. I'm really no expert at it, to be honest. Uh, but there is one thing that I do uh, fairly efficiently and uh, something that I'm really passionate about, and that is writing uh, and mixing and mastering music in a variety of different genres and styles and converting that skill into income. So my first rule, and, and only the first rule, is kind of a more broader and generalized one, uh, but the other four rules are focused on the, uh, on the production process itself. So I'm not saying this is going to work for everyone, but uh, this is how I do it. This system works well for me. Take from it uh, what you like. The first rule for me, and probably the most important one, is just to get the blood flowing. Most days I break a sweat before I sit down and get to work. I don't need to explain to you why this is a good idea. Uh, let's face it, many of us live very sedentary lifestyles. I sit at a desk and stare at a screen for like no less than six to eight hours every single day. Uh, I've adapted to that. I've accepted that reality and I don't mind it. But, you know, let's be honest, it's not healthy. The body needs to move. And so, you know, every morning just getting a little bit of exercise really helps me to set the vibe for the day and it really stimulates my creativity. Highly recommend it. Rule number two, start the writing process with intention. I always, always, always have a plan before I sit down at the desk. I never sit down here and, you know, wonder to myself, hmm, what should I work on today? And in fairness, it's a little easier for me these days because I have, uh, you know, clients who request certain things from me. And that obviously, you know, serves to push me in a certain direction and motivates me to, um, get tasks finished based on deadlines and such. But looking back at when I was first starting out, I used to go into my writing sessions with a ton of energy and this expectation that inspiration would strike like divine intervention. And it would kill me every time because what I learned is that if I didn't choose a direction ahead of time and prepare accordingly, I would get really overwhelmed by the amount of choices that I had in front of me. So if I were only interested in writing, say, like lo-fi hip hop, or if I only wrote like rock tracks, uh, life would be so much easier. Uh, but because I have this a voracious appetite to explore uh, all these different genres and styles, it means that I gotta have um, a game plan before I fire up the DAW. And this is a game plan that typically I've prepared the night before or even days ahead of time. For me, what that game plan usually looks like is just something as simple as having like a, a playlist of tracks together that I can reference for arrangement and sample selection and inspiration. Something that can help me get into the right mindset and stay on track throughout the entire writing process. Just getting started is truly the most difficult thing for me. Um, it's where I personally encounter the most resistance. It's the point at which I'm most likely to allow myself to get distracted. Uh, so it's really important for me to have a clear plan of attack. So if today I'm planning to write some, let's say, trailer music, then not only am I going to have my inspiration and reference playlist of trailer music prepped 
and fired up and ready to get me in the right headspace. But like any good tradesperson, I'm going to have uh, my trailer music tools all within arm's reach. And that leads me to my next rule. Create shortcuts. Let me show you my essential shortcuts that I use to keep my workflow fast and efficient. The idea is simple. Identify whatever regular bottlenecks uh, there are in your workflow and find a way to remove that obstacle. A perfect example would be having the contact player loaded by default whenever I load a new software instrument in Logic. Because 90% of the time I'm going to use contact and on the 10% chance that I use something else, I usually have a track setting built in where I can instantly recall my most frequently used virtual instruments. This goes for audio tracks as well. The last thing I need is to painstakingly load uh, a compressor and an, and an EQ every time uh, I want to set up my mic to record my acoustic guitar. I record my acoustic guitar all the time. So I've got my track setting saved for it. I know it sounds good and it's one click away. Another shortcut that I use is having all of my most uh, frequently used samples ready to access without having to dig through folders. I have them all placed in my favorites column here on the left side of my finder window. These transition samples, for example, I use these a lot. So again, just creating easy access. Every DAW is going to have a slightly different workflow and its own uh, shortcut hacks. What I've shown you here is really just surface level stuff. And I've got plenty more key commands and shortcuts that I use every day, uh, especially when it comes to working with MIDI. I should also mention that, you know, a lot of producers swear by using templates. Uh, others don't like to use them. Uh, I think that they can be pretty useful, especially if you're working on like a big orchestral mock-up. I use a template for trailer music, uh, for example, but uh, often I just start with a blank session too. It, it really sort of depends. But either way, start making these shortcuts because those precious seconds that you spend looking for samples or searching for plugins, uh, they add up in the long run. And the last thing that you need are these micro interruptions of your creative process. Rule number four, create a checklist. I've been doing this for quite a while now. And, you know, at this point, the checklist is kind of, you know, in my head. But here's what it looked like when I first wrote it down. And this is a process that I still follow religiously. And it's a process that's outlined in all of my production courses. So let's go through this list and I'll show you what the evolution of a track looks like at each step. For the first step, I'm basically just looking to lock in like a solid chord progression and a melodic idea. This starts in the context of a loop, and this is where I sort out like the essential main ingredients of the track and set the emotional intention. So in the case of this track, it started out with the guitar chords, added some electric piano, all of my drum stuff, the bass and a piano melody and I do some degree of mixing as I work and as you can hear it sounds pretty developed already so this is what the basic ingredients looks like and this is where I would move on to step number two. So for step two, I'm just taking our basic ideas and using them to arrange the track. So using the basic ingredients from step one, this is what I've decided that the arrangement's gonna look like. We've got an intro, hit our first A section here, breakdown, and then a slow build up towards the last A section and then out. And after I arranged this and decided that the breakdown was gonna happen here right after bar 17, I added a new element to the mix using this lost synth as well as a secondary melody throughout this buildup. And it's just something a little different to change up the energy from the A section. So this is what the track would look like after step three is complete with all the detailing out of the way. So all the texturization is essentially what you're seeing in pink down below here, as well as the string ensemble. So I'm using some forest ambience. I have a few textural one shots and transition samples, which sound like this. And then, like I said, the string ensemble. So these are all the finishing touches. It's like the icing on the cake. And of course the final mixing and mastering touches as well. Last rule is to take breaks. This is a simple one and it's subjective. Everyone works a little differently. But what I suggest is just to pay attention to how your brain works. Are you really being productive after working for 45 minutes to an hour uh, on a track or are you just listening to what you've created over and over again and kind of spinning the wheels? 
because that's what I do. I've got about 45 minutes to an hour of like undivided uh, attention. And then I start to get a bit distracted and I stop being productive. And that's when I go take a 15 minute break. Uh, I get up, I move my body a little bit. I do a stretch or two, uh, maybe go make a snack or take a walk. It's just a way for me to mentally reset so that when I come back to the desk, I'm ready to tackle another 45 minutes uh, of deep work. As far as creativity goes, I honestly only have about like three to four hours of truly creative output in any given day. And I can stretch that out a bit if I take breaks. The rest of my days are typically filled up with more administrative work, like answering emails and uh, managing my businesses, etc. So those few hours of creative energy are super important for me and I nurture them. All the previous rules that we've discussed here are a means of removing obstacles that stand in the way of the creative process. So those are my five rules. And as promised, here's a few bonus tips to get more done every day. First of all, identify resistance. There is a great book that I highly recommend you read called The Art of War by Stephen Pressfield. One of the key concepts outlined in this book is that overcoming resistance is actually more important than talent itself. In fact, many people have a lot of talent, but very few uh, put in the work and follow through. And I really, really believe this to be true. If you are struggling with self-doubt and procrastination uh, or just plain self-sabotage, uh, this is the manifestation of your inner resistance. And it's imperative that you recognize it and you face it head on. I still deal with my own resistance every single day. And like I said earlier, uh, it kind of rears its ugly head before I even get started. Every time I step into the studio to write, I feel that uh, slight sting of self-doubt and something in my brain starts looking for excuses to procrastinate. And sometimes I'll just, you know, catch myself scrolling uh, on Instagram or just killing time uh, in some way or another. And what that actually is, like at the at a much deeper core level, is uh, it's a fear of failure. I'm still dealing with this anxiety, like despite all of my wins, and I've been doing this for years. And I really think that, you know, the best way forward starts with just identifying that resistance and then leaning into it. It does take some courage. And for me, it actually, you know, it takes courage to get started. It kind of sounds ridiculous, but it's true. You know, once I get the ball rolling, once I actually do get started, then I'm all good and the ideas start flowing. But getting started is truly difficult for me sometimes. There's a great quote from the book that goes like this, and let me know in the comments if this resonates with you because it certainly does for me. There's a secret that real writers know that wannabe writers don't. And the secret is this. It's not the writing part that's hard. What's hard is sitting down to write. Whatever it is that keeps us from sitting down is resistance. Okay, my next tip is task batching. Very rarely do I ever start and finish a single track in one day. I'm often given briefs that require me to write several uh, songs in a similar style, usually three at a time. Uh, and what makes a lot more sense for me is to tackle one step from my checklist and apply it to three separate ideas. So for instance, this month, like I mentioned, I had to you know, write two uh, ukulele-based uh, acoustic folk songs for a brief. And rather than spend a whole day you know, focusing on one track, what I did was I just spent a whole day mapping out the basic ideas uh, the motifs and arrangements for both tracks. I left all of the detailing and the texturization and all that to another day. And the main purpose of this strategy is to avoid context switching or to avoid mentally jumping back and forth between tasks. It takes time and mental effort for us to context switch and task batching really helps uh, reduce the amount of context switching that you have to do uh, during a single day. And I'll be honest, completing like an entire song from start to finish in a single day is really mentally exhausting. I'd much rather personally come back to my basic ideas with like fresh ears the next day and focus on uh, on another task that I can apply across multiple song ideas. It's something that works really well for me and I definitely recommend giving it a try. My next tip is to actively work towards getting inspired and ignore self-doubt. Easier said than done, I know. I used to think of inspiration as something that was you know, much more passive. Uh, and sure, there's people out there who seem to have a really natural inclination to get inspired and that's great. But for me, it's an active process. It's a process of letting go of the everyday uh, bullshit and anxiety and self-doubt and making room to be inspired and find joy in the process of trial and error. It's a process that includes adjusting my expectations. And, you know, I know that the majority of my work 
uh, won't move the needle for me, but like one in 10 tracks uh, that I finish is really going to hit hard. Inspiration is also the process of actively listening and referencing other people's work. You really have to open yourself up to learn from and be inspired by others. Try not to work in a vacuum. Uh, you spend some serious time listening to what's out there. And by the way, when you hear something that's totally outstanding, it's completely normal to think to yourself, uh, damn, I'm never going to be able to write something like that. I still feel that way all the time, uh, and it sure as hell doesn't stop me from trying. I'll probably always feel as though I'm not as good as I want to be as a music producer. That's just the way I'm built. But I do take a lot of satisfaction in knowing that I'm better than I was yesterday and the day before and so on. As long as I'm improving and growing uh, and moving in the right direction, that's all that really matters to me. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, that's all I got for you today. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about music licensing and researching and applying to music libraries, I've got a completely free course for you uh, to get you started on that journey. There's a link to that in the description below. Go check that out. And let me know what you think of this in the comments. I'm always happy to hear from you. Hit that like button for me if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.